Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm on Tinton Falls and we're gonna be relocating a panel that's in the basement. It's actually a main lug only sub panel and it's got about 15 to 20 circuits in it. We're gonna relocate it to another area of the, of the basement in the utility room so they can finish off uh, the basement, make it a living space. So welcome back to the channel and uh, thanks for being here. Okay, so my first order of business here is to get this 2x4 pressure treated lumber attached to the cinder block wall. And I'm drilling a small pilot hole so I know where to drill my 5 8 hole with this big uh, SDS Plus M18 drill. Uh, I'm using 3 inch lags and shields and as you can see, there's a, I've already drilled out for a recess uh, for the... For the for the bolt to attach or from the screw to attach to the shield <clears throat> so that I can mount the plywood on top of that and once you tighten that down this is the best way that I have found to attach lumber to a cinder block wall cinder block is sometimes soft so the tap cons I know this from experience don't always give you the desired uh, sturdiness to the cinder block wall so at home in my garage I paint the uh, the plywood here it's just some kind of gray I picked out. I forget the color of it, but I got a gallon of this stuff. So all the new panels that I'll be putting in, you'll see that color panel board. So I was here uh, over the course of two days. And what I'm doing is I'm relocating what used to be a main breaker panel, uh, but they upgraded. It's kind of a weird setup where they got a 200 amp main on the outside of the house, which is kind of strange, especially in this neighborhood. That's an overhead service, but... Anyhow, they installed a generator some years ago, and there's a, this panel that's down in the basement now. It used to be the main breaker panel to the house. I could just tell from experience. Um, but when they added the generator, it looks like they might have added this 200 amp panel on the outside. And, of course, they got an um, automatic transfer switch panel, but it doesn't do the whole house. So it's not a service-rated uh, transfer switch. Anyhow, room re relocating the sub panel or the, the sub panel um, so that they can finish off the basement and the panels then in the utility room so <clears throat> um, so I got the board mounted here and now I am getting my PVC attached to the bottom side of the joist here and I'll go to the outside and reroute this conduit um, all the way back to the transfer switch but for the first day here, I want to get my panel mounted and do all this inside work so that when I turn the power off tomorrow, the next day when I get there, um, it's not uh, a long outage. The, this job actually took me a little bit longer than I had anticipated, which is okay. Yeah, so be real careful here when you're taking this uh, KO out so you don't take out too much. Um, I've noticed I'm using these square D panels a little more often lately and uh, I feel like these knockouts are easier to take out in the square D panels than they were in the Cutler Hammer panels that I was using. I don't know if that's uh, by design. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, I'm using an inch and a quarter uh, PVC conduit here. So I am taking out an inch and a quarter uh, fitting <clears throat> and then I'm going to attach it. Obviously, we'll tighten up that lock nut. And I wasn't exactly pleased the way this conduit was sitting. So you'll see in a minute here that that stud closest to the wall to the left of the panel is still up. See how it's just hanging there with that wire? So eventually, I cut it out, and now it's hanging there. And that black wire that's going through right there, I couldn't disconnect that until the following day because that was another sub-panel um, on the other side of this utility room with those two panels going. But as you can see, I took that out so I could uh, get my PVC to sit just right. This is the old existing main breaker panel, which is now a sub panel. And as you can see, the service entrance cable there serving the panel. Everything was open here, and he's, he's pretty close to getting ready to remodel in his basement and finishing it. Um, those 12 wires on the left-hand side right there, eventually tomorrow... Those will go, all go into the new sub panel that I'm installing today. Uh, and if you didn't know, I, I left a note in the community page that I um, 
this customer actually found me here on YouTube and saw one of my videos and reached out to me. I went out there on a Saturday a couple weeks ago to look at the work, uh, gave him a nice fair price. We applied for the permit, we wait for the permit to be approved. And then uh, probably about three, maybe four weeks later, we got out here to do the work. And so what I'm doing here is I'm using that M18 um, right angle drill and I'm making like an inch and a, like a one inch hole, maybe like an inch and an eighth. I forget the name. They're like a speed bit. I forget what these bits are called, but they make a nice big hole. And what I'm doing is I'm running new wires to the new sub panel and eventually we're going to the wires that are in the existing panel to my left hand side right there we're going to extend them by a few junction boxes but that won't be until later on in the video and that wasn't until the following day but the first day that i was here i wanted to get as much work done as i can before i had to turn the power off to extend those circuits and to reconnect the new feeder I've been doing electrical work now. This is my 33rd year. I got started in 1990 when I was in when I enlisted in the United States Navy. I joined the CBs, which stands for a Construction Battalion, hence the C and the B, CBs. And so our motto was: We build, we fight, and of course, we party all night. Uh, that's where I got my start, and I worked for several contractors before finally getting my electrical license in 2009. And I've been in business ever since doing this kind of work that you see in my videos. So this is a Square D Homeline 30 circuit panel, full size. 30 circuits are full size. And you could put the twin breakers, this panel, uh, or rather the bus bar is rated for up to 60 circuits. So that would be 30 twin circuit breakers. But I try to steer clear to 30 circuit of the twin circuit breakers. Uh, and try to put full size in. And I don't think we're going to get any, you're not going to get that many more circuits out of here anyhow. Because um, the house isn't that big. And the kitchen's already been remodeled. They're going to be redoing the uh, basement. So there'll be a few circuits in here. So when you're loading these circuits into the new panel, try to put them in. Try to think about what you're doing before you put them in instead of just throwing them in real quick. And so <clears throat> I get them in. I'm using these black button connectors on the top here, and uh, I want to get a couple. I want to get at least one staple on each of the cables here, and I'll double up the cables. Um, the only you're only allowed to have two wires laid flat, or two cables laid flat with one staple attached to that board, or to a framing member, as you see up top there. So you want to staple them and align them in a neat workmanlike manner, and of course, this takes time. Uh, I've done, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm able to see it before I actually do it. Uh, but even I make mistakes. <clears throat> uh, once, this, once the circuits are inside the panel, I start ripping off the sheathing and I use a utility knife, a, fast, a, a Milwaukee Fastback utility knife to strip back the sheathing on the cable. And then I come back and I take away the, uh, the wrapping around the equipment grounding conductor. None of these are labeled here. Um, it was just, I didn't know what circuits were what inside that panel. Even though a lot of them were identified, it looks like some, another electrician had been in there or somebody had been in there and adjusted and changed things. So I didn't know how accurate everything was. So I decided to relocate these circuits. And then later on, while I'm waiting for the inspector, uh, before the inspection, I'll label each of the circuits. Now here um, I'm attaching an equipment grounding conductor bar. This is a main lug only panel. Okay, so the, the, the shut off for this panel is actually on the exterior in an automatic transfer switch. Now it's not a whole house transfer switch. And so when we go outside, I'll explain that more to you. So here we have a four wire feeder. We're gonna have an equipment grounding conductor. We'll have a grounded neutral conductor. And then we'll have two legs of 120 volts each. So when you attach these in the field, you cannot use sheet metal screws or sheet rock screws. You literally have to drill screws, drill holes, and use this threading tap here uh, to thread 
so that I can put in a 832 screw and attach it to the enclosure that way. That's what the code is looking for. And the reason why they want that is they want a nice solid connection so that it won't come loose uh, because this is the equipment grounding conductor. And so if you have a ground fault situation on one of your circuits, if it doesn't attach to the grounded neutral conductor at the main disconnect, which is outside, and the equipment grounding comes loose here, then you're not going to be able to clear the circuit. You're not going to be able to clear the fault, I should say. And as always, I like to make a nice clean panel if I can. That's why I put the ground bar up at the top here. If totally acceptable. I'm doing two equipment grounding conductors of the same size. So both of these right here are either 12 aug or 14 aug under the same common terminal. And if you were to use a 14 gauge equipment grounding conductor and a 12 gauge grounding conductor underneath the same terminal, your inspector could knock you down for that. But being that this is an independent piece of equipment going into the panel, it's not going to have any listing on the door uh, of the panel. But I know from experience, that's not what we're, we're trained to do. We're trained to put the same size conductor under the same terminal. And you're only allowed to do this, as I mentioned before in my other videos, with equipment grounding conductors. You cannot double up under the same terminal any grounded neutral conductors. That is a violation. And like I've said in other videos, the reason why that's a violation is because the grounded neutral conductor is a current carrying conductor. Here's where I begin terminating my grounded neutral conductors. And these, as you can see, they're from an isolated bar right there. So they're different than what's bonded to the enclosure. All right. So that neutral grounded neutral conductor is completely isolated from this panel enclosure. All righty. Now here's an interesting uh, camera angle I thought would be cool. I have a magnetic mount for the GoPro and I put this on the top. But unfortunately, the mistake I made here was putting the uh, circuit breakers in the top first so you can't see me lining them up but i think if i do this again i would put the breakers in at the bottom and work my way up just for a better camera view here i believe i had about 20 circuits here i had one double pull 40 which actually feeds out of this to another sub panel that's off uh, camera here to the to my right in the same room uh, it looks like that was installed when they remodeled the kitchen. There's a lot of 12 wire circuits in that panel. Uh, other than that, everything in here is a single pole circuit. I did put some double pole circuits in here because, or circuit breakers, because I had some multi wire branch circuits. One of the things the owner asked me to do when we moved this panel was give him a receptacle. for his dehumidifier in that utility room. So I'm bending some conduit here without even measuring. And I'm gonna be doing back-to-back -back off box offsets, one that's gonna go into the bottom of the panel and the other one that's gonna go into a single gang utility box where I'm going to put a single receptacle in lieu of a GFCI receptacle because the GFCI receptacle could trip. Now there's nothing in the code that allows for this, but most inspectors in New Jersey will allow you to put a single receptacle in as long as it matches the same um, overcurrent protection as the circuit breaker. So if you put a 20 amp circuit in, you need a single 20 amp single receptacle. And this way, that particular receptacle will only serve the dehumidifier and that's what allows us to not put in the GFCI receptacle. Check with your inspector before you do that. Most inspectors in the state allow this. Uh, of course, when we do the inspection, he could knock me down for this and I'd have to put in the GFCI. But the trouble with that is you will have a, uh, you, you have the potential for a nuisance trip. And if that dehumidifier is important to the area and it's not working, well, you can see how that could be a problem, especially if you're not at home um, when that happens, or maybe you're away for a few days away from home, that could be a real problem. Now, obviously, I take pride in what I do here, and I try to do a nice job. 
and I could have ran PVC. Uh, I think EMT looks a little sharper. It takes a little bit longer to get uh, in place. Um, but with those offset bends back to back right there, it allows for a nice looking job. So there's the 20 amp receptacle, 125 volt. Uh, pretty soon here, I'll put the panel cover on and that'll be the end of the first day. Uh, and then we'll get on to the second day where, we, um, we're t where, we're, where we're able to turn off the power to the house here or to this particular panel and uh, start doing some demo with those existing circuits that were flapping in the breeze. So the next morning when I returned, I was able to turn off the power to the panel that was still live. And uh, some of these wires that were going across are in the way. I was able to redirect them into the new sub panel. So that's what I'm doing here. You can see there's a bunch of 12 wires. There was that, uh, that black 8.3 right there, which is a 40 amp feeder to another panel. Uh, so here I'm able to um, get rid of all the old wires and scrap them, put them in a pile. Then uh, I'll put them into my truck and we'll bring them over to the scrap yard when we get a moment. I like working with, new, with, the new, with the new cables here, uh, a lot more than the old cables. So the old cables that aren't going to reach the new sub panel, you'll see here, I'll put them up into a couple of junction boxes. And we use four inch square boxes. Uh, I usually keep the deep four by four by two and an eighth, uh, four inch square 1900 boxes. And then I'll put a, um, a box extension onto them to give that more cubic um, space for the conductors. And so I have a total of, I think eight or nine circuits that I'm extending in these, into these two boxes. And the idea is when he puts, when they finish off this basement, there'll just be two blank plates up in the ceiling. Cause obviously we can't conceal these old conductors and rerouting them and rewiring them to the, uh, to the boxes where they go to would, you know, would just be too much, would be too expensive. So this would be, this is the alternative way of doing that. This is actually what I would do at my house. And um, it took a few more hours to do this, but I like this kind of work. I got plenty of lights here and I was happy to make this video for you guys. So here's the two boxes or the four box, the two boxes and the two extenders that I'm using. So I take out my KO seals and I don't know if you know this, if you live in New Jersey, they used to have the Garden State Park where we used to um, use tokens before they came out with the easy pass and so a lot of people got those tokens those knockouts are the same size as those old tokens and when i first got into the trade we would drive from union down to old bridge new jersey to wire these new uh townhouses that we were working on and the guys told me that the uh the, to the tokens were the same size as those ko seals so they would take the ko seals uh to use them as the tokens to get through the toll booths uh, if you are an electrician in New Jersey and you remember that, uh, leave me a comment down below. I'd be interested to know. Now, this might look like a giant mess, and it is, but it's controlled chaos, believe me. I've got, I think, four 20-amp circuits and four 14-amp, 15-amp circuits, and one of, one of them and another 12-3. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to separate all my grounds and neutrals and my hot conductors. And I want to put together all of my equipment grounding conductors and tuck those away at the top of the box after bonding the box, of course. I don't think I showed that in the video, but there's a green screw in each of these metal boxes where the, one of the wires from one of the circuits, from the largest circuit, so a 20 amp equipment grounding conductor gets terminated around a green screw, which bonds the box. And then you attach all of the grounding conductors from each of the circuits together and tuck them away. Then one branch circuit neutral and one branch circuit hot goes to the new wire that goes to the sub panel. And you do that it's, uh, ad nauseum until you're finished completing and extending the circuits here. So the first thing I do obviously is make all my, make all my splices and then tuck them away into the top box there, put that box extension on there on each of these boxes and uh, there's enough room inside these conductors for a safe code compliant installation. This all in all right here, these two junction boxes probably took me about two hours to complete. It was a lot of work, uh, but it made it easier because I ran the wires, the new, the extensions yesterday. Uh, so now <clears throat> that I've relocated 
the wires that will reach, the cables that will reach to the panel, I'm gonna terminate them, and then I will go outside and we will uh, extend the new feeder to the outside and attach it to the automatic transfer switch. So I definitely try to make uh, the panels look as neat and presentable as possible. I don't go too crazy, but I do think it looks pretty neat. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. All right, so here is the uh, Kohler automatic transfer switch, and it's a 17 kilowatt standby generator. It's not the whole house. And this is the uh, transfer switch, what it looks like maybe like an eight circuit enclosure. Um, for circuits that are connected. And so this feeder in the new panel that I'm putting in is connected to this automatic transfer switch. So what I'm doing is I'm disconnecting the old feeder uh, because it's obviously not, obviously not gonna reach. And so cutting this out was pretty simple. Getting the new one in was somewhat difficult. Uh, going behind you can see underneath that panel on the left right there that's the main circuit breaker the main disconnect and here you'll see in a second I'll show you how they wired this uh, the first time with service entrance cable sleeve through the PVC must have been the biggest pain in the ass to do that I can tell you from experience <laughs> what a pain in the ass that had to be to put that together crazy so they literally Super stripped too. back about, 50, about 10 feet of service entrance cable. And then they sleeved the service entrance cable that they stripped back through the PVC into the transfer switch and left a little bit of the jacket to go down into the old panel. And it just seems like a long, a lot of work that was totally unnecessary. Uh, so this is my PVC heat box right here and I'm gonna bend the 90 uh, to go into the bottom of the automatic transfer switch here. So I'll take a quick measurement here and mark it and then cut it. And then I'll get my, uh, I'll get some PVC glue and we'll put in the male adapter and we'll get this end finished before we go back to the other end which proved to be a little bit difficult. Uh, you see the LB on the side of that main panel there. So I gotta go underneath it and then kick like a little, like a 22 degree angle. It, it was a pain in the neck. And, I, and thanks, thank, thank, thanks to the editing, it makes it look easy. But I struggled with this for about an hour just to get this right because the conduit wasn't level. It's a little bit higher over by the transfer switch and a little bit lower over here by the LB just to get that angle. And so, uh, I did the best with what I had. And as you can see, that white pipe is going across the window opening. And so I don't know if that's going to be a problem later on. That's a means of egress. And they got the uh, they got the air conditioning line sets going through the other window. That's a mess. I didn't want to contribute to that because that might need to be corrected at some point. Um, should this house go for sale to a new owner 
a home inspector might point that out and uh, that might have to be fixed. But I'm not an expert in that department. Anyhow, after I got that PVC in place, I pulled my feeders and so I'm going to terminate them. I ran number two aluminum and I ran all four conductors with number two. With aluminum, number two aluminum is good for 100 amps. So that's what I ran. The equipment ground conductor could have been a little bit smaller than that. I could have ran like a, uh, I don't know, maybe like a number six aluminum for the equipment grounded conductor, but I ran them all the same size. And uh, this is me terminating them. So there's an equipment ground, obviously that's with the green marking tape. And my grounded neutral goes in the middle there. And then there are my two hots. And uh, here I am back at the transfer switch. Now this was a pain in the neck because aluminum is not as nice as working with copper, but copper is so expensive right now. And it's totally not necessary, it was aluminum before. So we chose to go with aluminum here, sleeving this wire up. <clears throat> And pushing that aluminum into the LB, inch and a quarter PVC this is. Um, it just took a little while. So whenever I'm re-identifying these conductors like I am in this transfer switch, uh, I don't like to just put one or two pieces of green tape around it or white tape around it. I like to fully identify that conductor. So there's no doubt that this is the ground and neutral and this is the equipment ground and conductor. So a lot of guys, they don't do that as well. Uh, but that's their business. Anyhow, uh, I terminated it to the existing circuit breaker that was there before. It's a 60 amp. Uh, so there's 60 amps going down to that panel. Uh, obviously, it's sized in accordance with the generator. But in case we ever want to upgrade that generator, the number four, uh, I'm sorry, the number two aluminum good for 100 amps is in place. Now, this is the main breaker panel, and that wire that I had connected right there uh, was a temporary feed for a freezer in the basement and a couple of sump pumps that the owner was concerned about so we gave them temporary power this is an old 200 amp nema 3 panel and i had a hard time getting that panel cover back on now the power has been restored and this is the final product if you guys like this video, if you could, hit that like button. And if you'd like to subscribe and so you can see my other videos, that'd be very helpful. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. And as always, thanks for watching these videos. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you, guys.